Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. We'll look at verses 57 and 58. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 57 and 58. The title of the message is, Are You Determined To? Are You Determined To? Are You Determined To? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57. The Bible says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Brother Bogey, can you please pray for the message? Grace and mercy, Lord. Uh, uh, I just want to pray and thank you for allowing us to gather here today, today Lord. I pray, Lord, for, uh, for, for power from on high, Lord. Please give the preacher unction. Yes. And I pray, Lord, you please uh, uh, help us to apply whatever we hear, Lord, today to our lives. Yes. And I just want to thank you again, Lord, and just ask you, Lord, to please bless the message. And uh, we recognize, Lord, that uh, uh, the message is from thee, and uh, we need to hear from you, at least yes. I do. So I pray, Lord, that you please bless today in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Are you determined to? Determination is not a word that's really used nowadays. It's counterculture because everybody's looking for instant gratification and comfort. Nowadays, even Christians, they always look for comfort over conviction. They look for instant instead of eternal. But as a Christian, you are called to be what? According to the word of God. Staffest, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always. And the Bible is very clear. It's not when you feel like it. It's not when you're comfortable. Right. It's not when you are aligned. Nope. Always. Yes. Many times... People want to align God and the Word of God to themselves instead of aligning, instead of aligning themselves to the Word of God. It happens all the time. When you need something to happen, you go to God, but if, if it's not aligned with the Word of God, you try to justify. Lord, you, know, you said abstain from all appearance of evil, Amen. but I can't. I need to pay the bills. So just this instance, I hope you understand. You know, Lord, and I, I know you asked me to witness. And I know you have given me this opportunity to witness. But I'm not that comfortable right now. The guy's too big, you know. The girl's like all tatted up, you know. I can't talk to those people. And they're going to reject you anyways. Yeah. You know, so... It's a Lord, you know, it's all right. I mean, your attitude towards determination shows your attitude towards Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Many times, people tend to forget that without determination in your Christian walk, you can't really have victory in your Christian walk. Right. You have to be determined. So what is being, you know, determined? Right? What is determination? If you were to ever look at dictionaries about being resolute, you know, it's resolved. You're fixed on purpose and intent. You have firmness on your purpose and you're unmovable. You know, there's a lot, a lot of people who get confused with stubbornness, right, and determination. This determination is standing for what the Word of God says. Amen. Your stubbornness is standing for what you stand. Yeah. Right? You know, some people are so stubborn when you show them through the Word of God that your doctrine is wrong. You know, they're like, no, nah, I have determination. You know, you don't have determination. You're just stubborn. Right. Right? You know, husband and wives, right? all the time. Amen. You know, I'm determined to win this argument yes. against my 
why for my husband, right? But it's only a stubbornness. Yes. I mean, unless you guys have gone through the Word of God, and then somehow you found this gray area in the Word of God, something that, you know, even Dr. Workman cannot, you know, explain, then, hey, maybe you have your arguments. But that's not the case. A lot of times one person made a mistake, and the other person is trying to point out that mistake, and they're like, no, 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 no. You just, you just don't like me, you know? And then the person brings out all the past things, right? You know, you should have determination never to bring up the past. Amen. Right? Because that's not how to live a Christian walk. No. Many people, you know, definition is my own definition. So, you know, don't just take it with grain of salt. Losers are people that who always brings up past. Yes. That's it. You have nothing better to say. That's why you bring up the past. True. I mean, people here and who's listening, how many of you guys are perfect? Like, you've never made a mistake in your life. I mean, your hands should never go up, right? <laughs> everyone makes mistakes. Amen. And everyone knows the mistakes that you've made. Some people around your life. If you were to go to the, you know, path of uncovering and constantly discussing and talking about and putting people down through the past, you're not determined to serve the Lord. You're just determined to be critical. You have that critical spirit right. that devil wants you to have towards every human being. Yes. You have to examine things. But that's different from being always critical of people. If what they're doing is sinful, you have to examine, right? You yes. have to point it out. But that brother or sister or your family member already resolve that in front of God, then who are you to bring it up constantly? Right? I mean, that's like saying to, her, to your child who's 50 years old and you're like 70, 80, 90. Remember when you were five? <laughs> right? I still can't forgive you for doing that. And the child's like, Mom. And I said sorry many, many times. Right. And you forgave me already. I mean, why are you bringing it up? That's the attitude of many Christians that you have to completely get rid of. Amen. Forget it. I mean, leave it in God's hand, right? Yes. I mean, if the person has gotten right, then that's it. And if you are that third party, I mean, a lot of times it happens more between the third party. It's not the people who's directly involved. They're okay. But you always have to jump in. You're like that conniving snake. Instigator. Remember? Remember? Right? Well, are you going you gonna to let that go? You know? Yeah. A so-called BFF, so-called best friends. You know what? Whenever he, whenever she does something wrong, just bring it up. You know? They'll be sorry. Right? But what's that going to accomplish? Right. Nothing. And as a Christian, you have to be determined to not bring up the past. Amen. As much as your tongue, as much as your mouth is opening up, you know, because you're at a disadvantageous position, just close your mouth. Just shut it. Amen. You know, if it's hard to do it, just use your hands. And then just, <laughs> if they ask you why, you know, I, I'm stopping myself from saying some dumb stuff, things that I'm going to regret. Just do it. And if that's happening between the family members, whether it's, you know, grandma, grandpa, mom and dad, and your brothers and sisters and husband and wife, just do it. At least your other person realize, I mean, this person is trying, you know, at least. Because I've seen too many times where people are so fond of past, that they never go forward. You know, the Christian walk is all about progressing, going forward and going Amen. forward. You know, as I mentioned in the other preaching, armor of God in Ephesians 6 doesn't have anything for the back. Right. It's everything for the front. So you just go. Amen. Forget it, just go. You fall, 
you just go. Get up and go. And go and go and go. Because all you're going to do is, if you turn around, it's going to stop you going forward. And you're going to just remember, try to reminisce, try to leave your past. How many times have you seen so many people fail in their Christian walk and just regular life? Because all they think about is past. Some people who were rich in the past, now they're not as rich or they're poor. They all talk about their rich days. What's that going to do? I mean, is that going to comfort, give you comfort for that instant second? But you have to look forward. Yeah. You got to work. You got to make a living. Yes. Right? Some people, yeah, you know. And husband and wife should never do this, right? Oh, yeah, you know, in the past, you know, I met someone, but, you know, they accepted me who I am, <laughs> as who I am, right? They accepted my simple ways. But how come you're not? Well, of course, you don't say sinful ways, but you try to create your own nice way of saying things. And then as the other person listening, what do you think? You think they're going to be like, oh, yeah, 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 you know, you know. I'll be like that other person. No, they'll be offended yes. greatly. And as you go start going through the past, what happens? And talking about the past of other people, all you're doing is comparing people and comparing yourself with other people. Like in the past, you know, I was a president of a company. So what, right? In the past, you know, I met this person, you know. They were awesome and, you know, they were pretty, they are handsome, so what? I mean, what are you trying to prove? All you're trying to prove is your sorry state. Yeah. That you are in a sorry state of your life where, you know, only thing that could comfort you is thinking about a little bit of glory that you had in the past. Pathetic. Yeah. And as Christians, you should get rid of it Amen. from your life. That's right. You should never hang on to your past. And you should never rely on your past. Because that's what the devil wants you to do. Yes. Prime example is people who doesn't do anything for the Lord anymore. Right. They're like, you know what? I've done a lot in the past. You know, I served in the ministry, I led singing, you know, I witnessed to many people, I went to street preaching, I done a lot of things. But what about now? You're like a bad example. Like, you don't do anything for the Lord anymore. And what good is that going to do to anybody who's listening to you? Right. Oh, okay, okay, you led 100 people to the Lord, you know, 20 years ago. Okay. <laughs> What are you doing now? Man, I was gung-ho. I was fighting the police for the rights and everything out in the street, doing street preaching. Oh, well, how, well did that happen last week? No, 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 no. Ten years ago. You know? <laughs> now, you know, I just, it's not for me anymore. People go, I'm too old. I'm too busy. You know, I'm too weak. And they'll bring up every excuse. Right. And if you are not determined to stop talking about the past, all you're going to do is a person of excuses. Yeah. Who wants to be with a person who always gives excuses? Right? I mean, parents or brothers, sisters, grandma, grandpa, when you tell someone to clean up your room, clean up their room, and all they do is, you know what, I can't do it. Mommy, daddy, you know, grandma, grandpa, you know, husband, wife, I can't do it because... No, I'm tired. Okay, you said that for the last two months. You know, I'm, I have to study for something. You're on vacation, right? And you're like, oh, you know, I'm hungry. You just eaten five minutes ago. You know, every excuse starts coming out. Then as a Christian, you have to get rid of it. Amen. Once you stop thinking about the past, always looking forward. I mean, that's the biblical way. You know, what's our hope? Our blessed hope is looking for the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, you, your focus should be always Lord Jesus Christ. Then you will stop thinking about the past. Man, if we want to create and if we want to have a you know, local church that's full of charity, you know, full of people encouraging each other, admonishing each other, you can't talk about the past. Amen. Past is past. Yes. And especially if, if there's a sin still residing somewhere, you have to deal with it. 
I mean, that's why God put pastors in the local church yes. so they could deal with those things. And it's not your job to do it either. Right? Always be careful. Always be careful. Because a lot of Christians get puffed up. They get really proud. And devil puts that seed in their heart. You know what? You're better than them. You're more knowledgeable than them. You're more spiritual than them. You know, let's not let pastor be, you know, too inundated or mixed up with this issue. You know, you just deal with it. And it's not your place. And then you go to some brother and sister and create a havoc, right? Hey, you should be a street preaching. You're not spiritual. You should be out there, you know, doing visitation. You're not spiritual. What? You know? And then the other person gets offended. I'm like, man, this church is not for me. You know? And usually it happens to a lot of young Christians, baby Christians. And I don't want to be there. I'll just watch the internet and that's it. Yeah. And then they're like, ah. Man, and then you start talking bad about the person who's no longer here at the church. Like, you know, they just weren't spiritual enough. You know, and of course, you always have to open your mouth. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I try to tell them, you got to do this, do that, do that. You know, you're not doing this and doing that because something's wrong. You know? And I, I just told them my example, how great I am. You know? I never miss street preaching. I never miss visitation. I always am at the Sunday school. I'm always at the thing. That's not a bad thing, but your intention is 100% wrong. If you're doing those things, if you're here today sitting where you are just to show to people, then you shouldn't be here. Amen. Yeah. You bring bad spirit to the church. Yes. Our ministries is not about Increasing numbers, never. It's not about increasing viewers, never. It's all about, especially when it comes to preaching, people who's listening to it, change their life Amen. for the Lord. Amen. If you don't have that mindset, I mean, what's the point? You're wasting your time. Yes. That's why you need to have a certain type of determination in order to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, in the work of the Lord. Throughout the pages of scriptures, you'll find numerous examples of individuals, you know, who demonstrated determination. I mean, there's Abraham, right? Even though, you know, it seemed impossible, but he was ready to give up, right? Isaac. Yes. You see Apostle Paul. You see Daniel, right? You see David. They had the resolve. You know, a lot of them fell. A lot of them committed sin. A lot of them had to get up, but they had the determination to do it. Many times, you and I will constantly fall. Look at marathon runners. I mean, marathon runners, their goal is to do what? Finish the race. I mean, that's the number one goal. I mean, unless you're an elite Olympian, you know, you're not going to win the race. You're, you start the race so that you could finish the race. I mean, Christian walk is the same thing. Yes. I mean, it's a long, long race. You have to realize I'm not in a sprint. This is not a 100-meter dash. I'm in for the wrong, long, long run. That's right. My marathon is not, you know, 25 miles. No. My marathon is for my life. Lifetime. Throughout life. Yes. Then you have to constantly realize that I have to endure many of the grueling physical pain. Amen. And then you apply it to spiritual walk. I have to endure many of the grueling, you know, spiritual challenges. That's always ahead of me. It's always there. Yes. And this will give you some determination in your spiritual journey. I have to finish. I have to finish. Then what are some of the, you know, things that you should be determined to do? I already cover 1A. You, know, you, should, you should be determined to not bring up the past ever. And secondly, are you determined to follow Jesus? 
No, are you determined to follow Jesus? Getting saved and following Jesus is different. Many people try to follow Jesus Christ to get saved. That's works by salvation. So that's not going to work. Right. You, know, you can't try to obey the commandments and trying to go to heaven. Not going to work. But if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you have to follow Jesus. Amen. We have a you know, very famous hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus. Yes. Man, what's the point? Are you determined to follow Jesus Christ, no matter what? Are you ready every day to take up the cross and deny yourself? Mm. You, if you want to follow Jesus Christ, if you need to have that determination, and if you want that determination, you have to have self-discipline. You got to say no to yourself. Yes. You have to say no to yourself right now where your old nature wants to think about other things during the preaching. Right. You have to say no to yourself every day you wake up when you don't want to read the Word of God and when you don't want to pray. You have to say no to yourself and yourself does not want to open the mouth for Jesus Christ. Right. You have to say no to yourself when it's getting angry for no good reason. You have to say no to yourself when it's getting lazy. No, you have to say no. Amen. Yeah. In order to follow Jesus Christ, you have, have, you have to have a determination to say no to yourself Yes. Amen. all the time. What your flesh wants is opposite of what the Holy Spirit wants, right. always. Right? I mean, before you go to sleep, you and I both know that we should be praying. But do you do it all the time? If you have determination to follow Jesus Christ, you will be speaking to him on a daily basis. You will have fellowship with him on a daily basis. How many of you here and how many of you listening, you think that you have right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ right now? You have a right daily fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ. And you're like, I don't even know what that means. Then you got a lot of work to do. I mean, do you talk to him? Do you read the word of God? I mean, do you live for him? If you're not sacrificing anything, then don't think about determination. If you see the characters in the word of God, disciples, you know, even the, you know, currently people who are serving the Lord, people who have determination to follow Jesus, they have one common theme. They sacrifice. They always sacrifice, right? I mean, I think brothers and sisters were here early today to help out with some of the church stuff, you know? That requires determination, right? A lot of people on a Sunday morning, they'll rather get extra sleep. But if you want to do something for Lord Jesus Christ, you have to sacrifice. I mean, charity is all about sacrifice. Right? It's not about all this, you know, emotional love here and there that Hollywood depicts and shows to everybody. Charity is sacrifice and works. I mean, when do you ever sacrifice for Lord Jesus Christ? When do you ever get less sleep for Lord Jesus Christ? When do you ever get persecuted? for Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, if you don't see any of that in your life, then you're not living godly. All that live were godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Then you need to have determination that, you know, persecution is coming. And you will have determination that even though persecution is coming, I'm still going to follow because I'm doing the right thing. Amen. I mean, it's a famous story. Because John Wesley is one of, one of the most holiest men ever lived. He, was, he wanted to be so close to the Lord in fellowship. He wanted to know that he's doing the right thing. He wasn't getting much persecution, so he got off his you know, horse and prayed, and someone threw a rock next to him. Huh. Don't think that you're at that level, right? No. Don't get out of your car one day. Lord, you know, I haven't been persecuted. And then don't think that, you know, someone's going to throw a rock at you or anything. You know? 
But if you truly are determined to follow Jesus Christ, you will suffer persecution. And again, American persecution is, is a non-starter. Don't even think that you're really being persecuted. Yeah, no. Man, only persecution you usually get is verbal persecution. Right. Yeah, you don't really get physical persecution. No. There are cases, right? But if you go to third world countries where, you know, Islam is the official religion, yeah. Catholicism is official religion, Buddhism is official religion, what do you think is going to happen death. when you live for Jesus Christ? I mean, there's death, but before that, there's a lot of torture. Yes. A lot of torture. You know? And we complain, you know, oh man, I'm too tired serving the Lord. I'm too tired following Jesus Christ. You know, those Christians looking at us, they're laughing at us. Man, I wish what you guys have. I wish I could freely talk about Jesus Christ. Amen. Everywhere. Right? We have the freedom in this country to talk about Jesus Christ. Yes. We could preach it out on the street. Yes. But you neglect it. You're not determined to follow Jesus Christ. You're determined to follow your own desires. You're determined to follow your own lust. You're determined to follow your own comfort. So look at yourself. Ask yourself, am I determined to follow Jesus Christ? If you are determined to follow Jesus Christ, next point is that, are you determined to love others? A lot of people... You know, they're so gung-ho about following Jesus Christ, they forget about other people. You know, we see it a lot, of, a lot of young Christians who get a lot of knowledge, and they grow up and they get puffed up. I'm going to follow Jesus Christ no matter what. At the cost of what? Other brother and sister's testimony? Other brother and sister's faith? This is where you have to really follow Jesus Christ's example. Many times, they only follow, especially Bible-believing circles, his fiery side, mm -hmm. right? Hell preaching side. You know? You're out there preaching, you know, hell to these lost sinners. But you're not determined to show love to others, right. both Christians and non-Christians. Yes. Christ is the greatest example of someone showing love Amen. to every creature. Yes. He was compassionate. Yes. That's lacking in a lot of Christians these days. Amen. Right? Especially Bible believing Christians. Yes. You don't have any determination to show love for others. Like there's no such word as compassion in your vocabulary. You're all about, you know, iron. It's all about, you know, just gung-ho, gung-ho, gung-ho. But funny thing is, one day, you'll be at the same place of the other Christian who's struggling right now. Yes. Instead of praying, instead of being an encouragement, you're always discouragement. And then you reap what you sow. When you're going through the same thing, same thing's going to happen to you. Don't blame God for it. Don't blame your mama and daddy for it. Just blame yourself. Amen. You reap what you sow. That's why it is very important for you to understand that if you want to reflect God's unconditional love to others, you have to practice the same. Right? Don't do things expecting other people to do it back. You, you know, your mindset is, you know what, I'm going to give you this candy, so you better keep candy back. <laughs> you always have to have something attached to your action. You're always looking for something. Right? Obviously, you know, normal, good Christian will say, you know, thank you, appreciate it, right? Yes. Just because they don't do it, are you going to be like, oh, man, sour for the rest of your life? I mean, many people do things expecting return. I mean, if Jesus Christ did everything for us expecting return from us, I mean, we're the biggest hypocrites. Yeah. We're the biggest liars, right? I mean, 
Lord saved us from hell. Amen. He's with us. Like his best friend. Right? He's our Lord. And what do you do? What do I do? Right? We just disappoint him all the time. Yeah. And ironic thing is that when you do certain things for the Lord, you want the Lord to remember mm-hmm. and make sure he blesses you for it. Lord, you know, I stood for you today. So, you know, my prayer request, I need a new car. Uh, you know, I hope you'll make that happen, Lord. Uh, and you're like, Lord, I've been serving you for, you know, 15 years now. You know, even all the companies have, you know, anniversaries, right? Anniversary gifts. Well, Lord, you got to give me something. Uh-huh. I, I loved you. You could have shown me your love back to me. I mean, that's how wicked our thoughts become yes. when you're not determined to love others. You know, don't just love Jesus Christ. You have to love other people too. Amen. I mean, that, that's not really loving Jesus Christ, right? If you love the Lord, you're going to do what love, I mean, Lord did, right? And he loved all the creatures, especially those who are lost yes. on their way to hell. Then it goes to the next point. I mean, if you are determined to love others, I mean, are you determined to preach the gospel? No matter what, whoever you are, you are called to preach the gospel. Amen. It's not just the pastors. It's not just, you know, Sunday school teachers. Every single believer is called to preach the gospel. Yes. It's your duty. Amen. It's a command from the Lord. Amen. You have to preach the gospel. I mean, that's a great responsibility. Sure is. And a lot of people say, you know what? I want to be worth it. I want someone to give me some accountability and responsibility. Yeah. Here it is. Amen. Preach the gospel in season, out of season. Amen. All the time. Yes, sir. I mean, are you determined to preach the gospel no matter what? That means... You're carrying tracks around all the time. You know, I get embarrassed. You know, like I look for if I'm trying to pass out tracks, and then I look in my pockets, and I don't have it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's that's embarrassing. As a Bible-believing Christian, not to be ready to preach the gospel at any moment. And obviously, if Lord gives you an opportunity to lead someone to the Lord, you know, you start talking. Amen. Amen. You know, in American culture, people just talk. Yeah. You don't see it. You don't see it in like a lot of Asian culture. You know, in a restaurant, you know, like you're sitting apart and you start talking to each other. <laughs> Not really. But like here, you know, Western culture, you know, they start talking. Hey, how was the food? You know. And then you go, you just bring up a random topic. Yeah. You know? Since you're in LA, you start talking about, you know, LA sports teams or, you know, like the weather or anything. If you have determination to preach the gospel at all times, Lord gives the opportunity Amen. to preach the gospel. Only reason when you look at your Christian life where you don't really witness to anybody because you have zero determination. You have zero love for others, especially souls on their way to hell. That's why there are no opportunities. Have you ever prayed to the Lord? Lord, I'm determined to preach the gospel. I want people to get saved from hell. So please give me opportunity. I mean, when was the last time you asked the Lord for opportunity to preach the gospel? And when was the last time when the Lord gave you that opportunity, you actually preached the gospel? Yeah. You gave out a track. I mean, unlike, I don't know, trying to explain some physics theory, trying to explain the whole timeline of civil war, gospel doesn't take that long. Amen. Yeah. I mean, it's as easy as... You're a sinner on your way to hell. Jesus Christ died for your sins. 
No. You can get saved with repenting heart, receiving Jesus Christ into our Lord and Savior. Simple as that. Yes. I mean, many people can get saved within like a couple minutes. Yes. Because a lot of times, before you know it, Holy Spirit was already working in their heart. Yeah. They're already in conviction mode. They just were waiting for someone to tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, are you determined to preach the gospel? Next, I mean, are you determined to persevere? I mean, are you determined to persevere? Yeah. Again, you have to expect, as a human being, troubles are coming your way. And especially as a Christian, you have to expect that trials and tribulation will come your way. Simple as that. It's inevitable. You can't run away from it. You can run away all you want. It's going to follow you. Are you ready to? I mean, are you determined to persevere? It's just like a marathon runner, right? You start it, you're going to finish it no matter what. Yes. Right? And especially people who live in a household where you do not have the same faith, you need to persevere. I mean, we, we've had many cases where sister found the truth and they're saved. But husband is unsaved person. A lot of persecution. Some have left the faith, unfortunately. But some stayed and some won that person to the Lord because of their perseverance. Even at work, you know, not everybody works at a you know, nice, where people are always proper. No, people work in, you know, rough areas, yes. in a rough environment. And then a lot of people will be cussing, they'll be doing some dirty jokes and all that stuff. Yes. Of course, as a Christian, you're not going to join them. Amen. But you're going to persevere. You're not going to cuss. You'll still show, you know, good conversation as a Christian. And you could win them to the Lord like that. Yes. And you have to persevere when bodily failures come your way. This is hard, right? And if you haven't gone through it, you don't know it. So don't be like, you know what, you know, even if I'm about to die, even if I have cancer, even if blah, 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 you know, I'm going to you know, serve the Lord and follow the Lord. Before you say it, yeah. just persevere one at a time. Amen. You have to Follow, cling unto the Lord when those things come. Because it will come to you. And again, Lord will not give you anything that you cannot handle. That's the number one thing, right? If Lord knows that you can't jump off the second floor, He's not going to make you jump off the second floor. He's not going to put you in that situation, right? Lord will only give you things that you could handle. That means that you could resist all the temptations. Because the Lord said, I'm not going to give you any temptation that you cannot resist. Right. right? And each person's level is different. Spiritual level is different. Then you have to be determined that, you know what? I'm going to persevere no matter what. Amen. I mean, as a Christian, I'm just going to persevere. Right? Everything that world, the devil, and flesh, you know, throws at me, I'm going to persevere. I'm going to trust in God's faithfulness. I mean, God is, I mean, Lord Jesus Christ is in you. Yes. Impossible things with man is possible with God. Amen. And the more you persevere, the more rewards you will have as well. I mean, that's just caveat, right? You know, you do it because you love the Lord, you follow the Lord. But the Lord's such a just person. You know what? You know, I'm a capitalist. I'm going to give you, you know, certain Woo! things on top of that. Thank you, you have your own rewards. That's how you have to hold fast. You, know? you can't be someone who just talks and talks and talks. Like in James 122, you have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. You and I could always talk. Yes. We could have a great, great, great talk, right? 
but nothing's concrete, nothing's for sure, yeah. nothing shows anything unless you put it into action. Yes. Right? You're like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm determined to follow Jesus Christ. If you say that to yourself 24-7 and don't do anything, what is that? You have to put it into action. Marathon runners, right? Yes. They run. In order to finish, even if they have to walk, they're going to walk. Yes. Even if they have to crawl, they're going to crawl. Yes. Until they cross that finish line. Your hardships is an opportunity for you to grow your faith. Amen. As much as it's hard to accept and say, in order for you to grow, you have to go through tribulation. You have to go through some hard things in your life. Yes. Think about many examples. Spoiled, rotten children and these brats where parents allow them to do everything. Once even a little bit of difficulties come in their life and harsh reality and trials come in their life, they fall. Yeah. You know? They just break. And then they go into downward, downward spiral. They do drugs, right? True. They don't even know what to do. You have to accept that as a Christian, trials, hardships, everything's coming. I'm going to persevere. Trust in God's faithfulness. Yeah. I mean, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You think the Lord will not keep his word? It's you and me who doesn't keep our words, right? Right. Well, Lord, keep his word. And next, you know, are you determined to walk in holiness? You have to be determined to be holy. And that's very important. I mean, Lord wants you to live as much of a sin-free life as possible. Yes. No matter what. Yes. Then are you determined to walk in holiness? Amen. Because that's up to you. It's not up to me. It's not up to your wife. It's not up to your husband. It's not up to your mom or dad. It's not up to your grandma, grandpa, your cousins. It's up to you. Yes, sir. Are you determined to live a holy life? When you have opportunity to sin, are you going to just turn away from it right away? Yes. Again, presentation, illumination, part of temptation, you're not committing sin. Once you start debating, you're committing sin already. And you are going to take that action many times. So if some sin presents itself, if you're determined to be holy, you're going to abstain from it. Amen. You're just going to run away from it. Yes. Unfortunately, you know, if you ever browse the internet, there are a lot of dirty stuff that just pops up. Yes. And what are you going to do? You know what? I need to examine what it is before I close it. I mean, you should have a pop-up blocker anyways. You know? yeah. It shouldn't even happen to you in the first place. But a lot of young children, you know, parents, don't be you know, naive. They've all been there. If they ever had a phone, I don't care if they're elementary kids or not, if you don't have a pa parental you know, blockers or some of those things in place, right. they've seen everything. Yes. I mean, don't try to lie to yourself. My kid is so innocent, you know. He, he's a sweet angel. But no, She's a sweet angel. They don't know anything about this. First of all, schools are teaching them already anyways. Come on, yeah, yeah. that's right. I mean, they're teaching from kindergarten all the way forever. Yeah. You know, so they already know. So they've heard yes. and they've seen. And it's so easy for them to access it through the Internet. True. Then, are you determined to take that phone away from them. Just give them a rotary phone. Just call. They don't need internet. Why would an eight-year-old need internet? Yeah. What are they going to do? Because you parents are lazy. You just want to turn on you know, this you know, Sesame Street you know, and then let them just see it the whole time so that you don't have to do any parenting. right? Yeah. So you have to have determination to walk in holiness Amen. all the time. If you know that thing or action will lead to sin, then don't get close to it. Yes. Avoid it, right? I mean, 
if you know that you have a history of doing drugs, and every time you walk by the dispenser, you can't stop but you know, get the joint, mm. then change the route. Yeah. Don't ask Lord for, Lord, give me strength as I walk through that thing to defeat that temptation. You just go away from it. Amen. Right? It might take you maybe a couple more seconds to go around, even a minute, then Lord gives you a way out to do it. And a lot of times, right, and when people are not watching, that's when you are really holy or unholy. Yes. Just look at your life when no one's watching, when you're by yourself. What do you do? What do you like to do? What do you not like to do? That will show how holy you are. But Lord's recording everything. I mean, one day at the judgment seat of Christ, everything will be played. Yes. Everything will be exposed and revealed. And I wouldn't want to be at a place where Lord commanded you and me to be holy. And he's playing everything and every unholy thing that you and I have ever done after we got to save his plane. So if you have determination to walk in holiness, simple solution, right? First, you have to confess your sins. Let's get, let's get rid of all this dirty pollution in our, you know, body, right? Yes. Just get rid of it once and for all. Once and for all. Then you need to confess your sins and you need to truly repent. Amen. True repentance is turning away from it completely. Yes. Don't say you repented of that sin if you confess your sin yesterday and you're doing it again today. I mean, that's, that's false repentance. Yes. True repentance is completely turning away from it. Yeah. If you want to be truly holy, you have to turn away from certain things yeah. once and for all. And that's the hardest thing to do because devil knows you better than anybody else. And devil knows your weakness. And devil's always going to present that sin in your life, which has been or which have been, if it's multiple, holding you back to be holy ever since you got saved. It's not like one year ago, two years ago. If you've been saved, it's holding you back since you've gotten saved. Many years. Then how are you ever going to defeat it right. without any determination? You have to have that resolve. Right. Even if I lose everything, I'm determined not to do it. I mean, can you even say that to yourself? But you gain everything in Christ. So don't think of it like, you know, when people look at you, oh, you know, for example, there's a great job opportunity comes your way, but you have to compromise your faith, right? Mm -hmm. right. You have to go with the gender ideology, you know. You have to support everything that this modern, you know, old culture, you know, liberal, humanistic, everything comes your way. What are you going to do? You know what? It's going to give me like, you know, a lot of money. So I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to do my best to just avoid everything. You can't. No. That's part of the job and qualification. Yeah. You just say no. Yes. No. I mean, are you going to give up everything that you built for Christ? No. For your own desires? Are you going to give up everything for your desires for the Lord? Good preaching. Simple as that. You know, Lord will take care of you no matter what. I mean, throughout the Word of God, Lord will take care of you. Yes. You choose Him over your flesh, the world, and the devil, which includes your family and whatnot, yes. your friends. The Lord's going to bless you and take care of you. Amen. He'll bless you more and more if you choose Him. I mean, everyone will have that kind of testimony. You know, if you ever meet a brother, you know, sister, who've chosen the Lord instead of something else, they'll tell you. You've been blessed much more. But you talk to people who chose the things of the world, the devil and the flesh, and not choose Christ, they're regretting. They'll regret for the rest of their life because you can't take it back. And devil's going to keep you, remind you. Devil's going to keep reminding you. Remember, you didn't choose Christ. You chose what I gave you. Why even fight? Then you become weaker and weaker. And then you 
you become no good Christian. Yeah. Like a lot of, just like majority, over 90% of, you know, so-called Christian who doesn't do anything for the Lord, that's you. That's how I'm going to be. If I'm not determined to walk in holiness. And lastly, I mean, I've gone through it many times. Are you determined to finish the race? You have to finish the race. I mean, you started. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your race has begun. And there is no, you know, tapping out, right? No. I mean, as long as you are alive, you can't finish the race. Then you have to stop building endurance. Yes. You have to start reading the Word of God more. Amen. You have to pray more. Yes. You have to be in the ministry more. You have to do more. Amen. If you're determined to finish the race, just like any athlete who want to finish the race, you have to train. Yes. Training is not easy, Tough. but you have to do it every day. You have to keep the faith. Amen. And then learn from your own lessons and learn from the Bible lessons and learn from other people who quit in the middle. Learn from it. You don't want to be in the same boat. You have to have determination to finish the race. As I conclude, it's time for you to examine and reflect on your Christian walk right now. How determined are you? I mean, are you determined to I mean, follow Jesus Christ no matter what? Are you determined to like, love others? Are you determined to preach the gospel? I mean, are you determined to like, persevere no matter what? Are you determined to walk in holiness? And are you determined to finish the race? Looking for that blessed hope. Amen. You can finish the race. You know, just look at Jesus Christ. It's so redundant. But looking unto Jesus. Yes. All you have to do is just look unto Jesus. And then you can fill in the plank. right? You can just look unto Jesus. And let's finish the race. Let's pray.